first and you've got tricks and tips with the machine. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this today because I want to concentrate on that because that's what you're asking for. But with winding bobbins, what I've noticed is you need to really show them how to do it properly. They don't need to do this every lesson. Some of them think they can do it every lesson and they go over the thread. What they need to do is put it up through the middle, down through the middle, I'll turn it up like that. The trick if you look at the sewing machine sheet is the machines work really well every time to sew if this is to the left and that's why I put left on the sheet. So I now teach them when I teach the parts of the machine to keep this left. We only put it to the right when we wind a bobbin and we must hold it like that a couple of times then cut the thread. Don't let go of it because it gets what happens with wasted thread, it's caught, caught under there. So just wind that up and put your hand over there. I'm not going to fully wind this bobbin today, but just to show you. But when it's fully wind, this springs back. Then cut the thread. So winding bobbins is a really important tool to teach them at the beginning. To thread up the machine, make sure, say to them, left and right, left and right hand. So under there, down there, follow the arrow down and bring the hand wheel and make sure this part's up. Look at the arrow, it goes back and forward. Now sometimes on the machine, this one, like that, and get them to actually look. This is the thread guide and the letter N is the key. Clip it under there and then See this? That's a real danger. They've put those in there because we're missing some screws. When the man comes, I'll get them. Please, the holes, the student's skills in threading a needle is really poor. Bring this up and make sure the white is behind. So I put the foot down and I thread it front to back and emphasise that to them. Make sure it doesn't get twisted. Sometimes it does. Then put that up. Make sure they don't touch this bottom bit. It's only this handle. Check that the red line with the dot is correct. Then thread the bobbin case. Can somebody pass me a bobbin case, please? I thought I had one here. It's really important. These machines, thanks Brendan work really well. Left, right. Doesn't matter whether they're left-handed or right-handed. I always teach them, put the right clockwise so the thread's hanging down and show them the hands of the clock. These students have got digitals. Then like that, under like that. And the only way it goes in is that straight up. Do not thread it through the hole. We're not doing buttonholes. And it must, and I insist the class is keeping quiet because I want them to hear that click. It must click. Please don't show them how to press that up or if it doesn't work, it does take about five to 10 minutes to fix it. Then left hand, right hand, hold that. I don't get them to press the foot because I find they press it too quickly and it goes up and down and then you get a knot. Always two threads at the beginning and the end of sewing and then close it. These samples are in the box out the front for all of them. I did start doing an L on them. I, it's a waste of time. To sew, I'm, I've, over the years I don't do these lines till I get to 9 and 10. I use the foot as a guide. Always feet away from the pedal. Make sure the threads are not around the the cord is not around the front, it's at the back. A pair of scissors between a machine and you, they can have some pins around the room. Needle in first, foot down, and I'm using the inside of that foot on the edge. I'm taking that and I'm going to come forward, then back. Now on the white machines, it's all the same, it's just a little thing. Not right off the edge because when they come back, it'll knot up. Then I'm guiding and I'm, look where I'm putting my hands. I'm not pulling through like this. Always the bulk of fabric is on the outside. Down like that, take the pin out and I'm going to come down to the corner like that. And I 
relate to driving a car, that we're using accelerator pedal and taking your foot off it is the brake. Turn with always the needle in and the foot up. Foot down and come to the end. And I'm using the guide steadily. It's not speed merchant, it's just coming forward like that. Needle up, foot up. If there's not two threads there, turn the hand wheel till you get two threads, cut the threads. Then I would show them how to tie a double knot and year seven do not know how to tie a double knot unless they've done scouts. I'm not going to do that at the moment. I'm just going to cut it off, but please encourage students to tie the double knot to make it stronger. To do zigzag, I press two, make sure it's two and a half. And on the machine sheets, I now teach that they, when they get it, they cross out. And I've done that on the sheet with the points on the board. So the width must be four to five. If we keep the length always at two and a half, it gives them a better zigzag. To do the zigzag, I put the foot down first, needle in the fabric, and I keep this edge on the inner edge here so that they get the zigzag right on the edge. Up like that, and they can get it right on the edge. The reason why to stop it, stop it from fraying, and that's how you get it on the edge, by using the foot. Sorry. Right, that's the machine and there's the simple steps. So they're using these two buttons only, always on two and a half and all to four to five.